What's going on guys, Colt and Mush back at it with a $400 gaming PC build. Now if you go ahead and take a look at the description box and you look at the parts list, you might be a little surprised. You might think, Mush, why are you going with an Intel option in this build when at a $400 budget it makes a lot more sense to go with an AMD build? Well, a couple of days ago somebody commented on one of my videos and requested a $400 build. They actually requested a $350 build, I went with $400, and they asked for the build to be easily upgraded in the future. Now if you go with the AMD option, you're probably going to get better performance than this Intel build. But the problem with the AMD option is you don't have a lot of upgradability options in terms of the CPU, so I think this build is more future-proof. If you're the kind of guy that does want to upgrade to, say, an i5 down the line, go with this build. Otherwise, I'll leave the AMD option in the description box down below for those of you that are interested. So starting things off with the CPU of this build, I went with the Intel Pentium G3250, a 3.2 gigahertz dual-core processor. Now, yes, it's only a dual-core processor, but believe it or not, this CPU paired with a decent graphics card can actually run Witcher 3. Not at 1080p maxed out settings, but it can run the game at around 720p to 900p and around medium settings and 30 frames per second. And it's a CPU that can be used on the LJ1150 socket, which in turn means that this CPU can be upgraded to an i5 down the line. So as a starting point for a $65 CPU, the Intel Pentium G3258 is pretty solid. For the motherboard, I went with the ASRock H97 Anniversary ATX LJ1150 motherboard. This motherboard is a full-sized ATX board for only $70. It's on the LJ1150 socket, which is great, meaning you can upgrade it to an i5 or even an i7 down the line. It has 4 RAM slots up to 1600MHz, and it can support up to 32GB of max memory. It has RAID support, no Crossfire or SLI support, but at a $400 budget, that just doesn't make a lot of sense anyway. And this motherboard has 6 SATA 6 gigabit per second ports. Just a really good motherboard that's going to give you all the upgradability options you need, and at a really cheap price of $70. For memory, I went with Corsair Vent. 8GB, 24GB sticks running at 1600MHz. Originally, I was thinking about putting 4GB instead of 8GB in this build, but I opted just to go with 8GB for only $49. A game like Witcher 3 will squeak by on the CPU, but having only 4GB of RAM is really limiting these days. Especially considering how cheap 8GB of RAM is, $49 for two 4GB sticks is not a bad deal at all. But in the future, you can go for a 16GB configuration since the motherboard does have 4 RAM slots, but obviously, in a starting out point in a $400 build, that doesn't make any sense to get 16 gigabytes right away, but it is an option you have in the future. For storage, I went with the Western Digital Caviar Blue 1TB 3.5 inch 7200 RPM internal hard drive. This Caviar Blue 1 terabyte is only $50, and if you want an SSD 6 months, 12 months down the line, you can pick it up. And by that point, SSD prices are going to keep going lower and lower, so you'll be able to pick up a 120GB SSD really cheap. But right now, that just doesn't make a lot of sense, so go with this 1 terabyte Caviar Blue for only $50. This will be a decent option in the build. For the video card, I went with the Sapphire Radeon R7 260X 2GB video card. It's $110, and there's a $20 mail-in rebate attached to it right now. So if you decide to use that, you can actually get this graphics card for only $90. This GPU can actually play a lot of the newer games. Like I said, Witcher 3, you can play that game at around 900p medium settings at 30 to 35 frames per second, which to be honest is comparable to what you would find on a console, and you're getting a fully functional PC for this $400 budget build. Obviously, it can't max out Witcher 3, but for a $110 GPU or $90 if you decide to use the mail-in rebate, it's a great feat to have just to run the game playably. For the power supply, I went with the EVGA 500 watt 80 plus certified ATX power supply. Now, while this build will only use 300 watts at max, I went with this 500 watt power supply because it's only $37 and the premise of this build is to have options open for upgrade. And if we went for a 350 or 430 watt power supply, you wouldn't have a lot of options to upgrade the GPU. With the 500 watt power supply, you do have those options. In the future, you could upgrade to an R9 280 or a GTX 960 or whatever GPU is out at that time. And 500 watts is only $37, so it's a really easy fit in the build. Finally, for the case, I went with the Thermaltake V3 Black ATX Mid Tyro case. I've been recommending this case a lot recently, and for under $40, this is one of my favorite budget end cases. Aesthetically, it looks pretty good, and the interior will get the job done, and for a case at this cheap of a price, that's really all you want. And it's going to keep all your parts cool, has good ventilation, and most of these parts aren't going to run hot anyway. The Intel Pentium G3258, not at all, and the Sapphire Radeon R7260X is a very easily cooled GPU, so $37 for this case was a no-brainer. So thanks for watching this video, guys. I will have the AMD option in the description box down below if you do want to get the AMD build. Otherwise, I covered the Intel option in this video. So thanks for watching as always, and have a great day, and I'll talk to you all later. Peace.